I started uh, to take on the practice of uh, thanking the money coming in and going out uh, both ways. And by doing that, I started appreciation uh, habit. And since then, I've been so lucky. So I got a book deal in Japan and uh, a one from New York, which got me into、uh, internationally best-selling author. My book is out in 40 different countries. So、uh, I think appreciation plays an important role in happiness and money. Hey, Insider, we have a special interview episode for you today featuring Ken Honda. Who is regarded as the most renowned and influential money teacher in Japan? He is also a best-selling author of self-development books in Japan, where he has sold millions of copies, which have now been translated into 15 languages. Ken has spent most of his life committed to understanding humanity's relationship with money and how to leverage it to create a life of prosperity, peace, and happiness. During his research, he studied over 12,000 self-made millionaires, which in turn allowed him to discover the secrets of the world's richest, happiest, and most fulfilled people, which he will actually be sharing with you in today's interview. So be sure to pay close attention if you're wanting to discover the secret money mindset habits of the most successful and yet happiest individuals around the world. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this special interview episode. So Ken, just want to say it's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, Thank、I、you think, so much. This is my honor. Definitely. Where I wanted to start this interview was with your backstory of what got you into this work, what motivated you to get involved with, you know, changing people's lives and so forth.、Uh-huh. To make a long story short, my father was a tax accountant, and、um, he was、uh, he he knew about money, so he started teaching me about money, but he lost himself after he witnessed his best friend committed. Uh, family suicide because of money, so、uh, that's when I was as、uh, uh, fourth or fifth grade, or maybe younger. So since then, I started to、um, have interest in money, and my father went into depression after that incident. So I wanted to learn more about、uh, happiness and money, and that obsession got me、uh, to start reading all the books in the school library. And I started、uh, learn about money and happiness, and I became successful because of my father's teaching about money.、Uh, when I was twenty nine, I could retire financially、uh, with my baby girl.、Um, so we concentrated on child raising for four years, and during the four year of semi retirement, I had this inspiration to write, and then I wrote a few pages of essay, and I started giving、uh, them out to my friends. My friends loved them. They wanted more and more, so I stapled them every day. And then later on, I asked a printer to print more copies, and uh, uh, people loved it. And I I was so happy to give away my booklets. Actually, I have it、uh, in with me here. It's、uh, original, you know, booklet, physical copies. And I gave about about one hundred thousand copies. A publisher called me, and they asked me to write a book. And since then, it's sort of like a, a history in the publishing industry because I have、uh, published more than two hundred books and sold about eight million copies in a small island of Japan. So that's awesome. That is incredible. So, what were some of the key lessons you were taught back then that really? So,、helped? so I have many mentors. One of them is Wahei Takeda, who is called Warren Buffett of Japan. And、uh, I realized that there are two kinds of pe-、uh, wealthy people: very happy, wealthy ones, and、uh, not so happy ones. And、uh, I, I decided to、uh, become a student of happy millionaires instead of unhappy,、uh, grouchy millionaires. And I found out that all the people had something in common: that is, they did enjoy their work, they followed their heart, so they became successful by doing what they have. And also the other character characteristics is that、um, they really appreciate、uh, what they have in in life, especially money. So they have a habit of thanking money coming in, and they they also thank people when they pay. That was very interesting. So、um, and since then I started、uh, to take on the practice of、uh, thanking the money coming in and going out、uh, both ways. And by doing that, I started appreciation. Uh, habit, and since then, I've been so lucky. So I got a book deal in Japan and、uh, a one from New York, 
which got me into uh, internationally best-selling author. My book is out in 40 different countries. So uh, I think appreciation plays an important role in happiness and money. Mm. So you're saying when you let go and when you receive, you're thanking, you're thanking. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You know, we tend to complain about money when we receive it. And also, we don't want to let go of money when we have to pay for the bills and pay taxes. You know, we hold on to the money. But instead, if we, if we can say goodbye to money, like the best friend staying uh, for, with you for a couple of days, you'd say, thank you, you know, see you soon, very soon, come back soon. Uh, and uh, hopefully you bring your friends. And if you say that to money, money can respond to, back to you. That's how I feel. Right. So it's like having a gratitude when you're receiving, when you're letting go. Yes. I, I suppose what I'm wondering is if somebody's watching this right now and they are mm -hmm. struggling, struggling financially, how can a habit like this actually help them to accumulate more wealth? You know, I think probably getting out of a debt or getting out of this uh, low paying uh, place is a number one priority. You know, one of my students was a single mom uh, secretary. She was always complaining uh, about her low pay. Uh, but after learning about this thank you technique, she started thanking her boss. And uh, she, got, uh, she got so excited when she found out she was getting a raise from her boss. And then uh, she got a big bonus. So her appreciation for the boss finally uh, started paying off. Uh, because she realized that she didn't have a college degree, but he hired her. So she's, she had so many other reasons to appreciate him for the job. So once you start appreciating, you know, uh, your clients, your boss and coworkers, um, customers, they respond the same way. You know, one time I divided my clients into two categories. One, I would do nothing. The other, I just keep bringing small gifts like books, tea, and like little little sweets. And six months later, I was amazed that the second group, I always gave something to show my appreciation for the business. They gave me so many referrals. Wow. So if you start appreciating your clients, your customers, your family members, uh, the appreciation you put out comes back. So I think that mental attitude is the first step to get out of this uh, dark place. And once you get, uh, you get uh, a job, uh, you transfer your job to a better uh, place where you get uh, more uh, reward, uh, rewarding, both emotionally and financially, you finally can get to breathe. And then please start thinking what you're good at. Because uh, people who are using their skills and talents, they get paid more than the people who do the job they hate. So just find out uh, if you like talking, you should talk more. If you like listening, you should listen more. And you, uh, by listening more, your clients will uh, buy more somehow, you know, because they trust you. They, uh, they love listeners. And if you're a great talker, then you know, just keep talking more because, you know, that way you will get a raise. So uh, if you want to cook, you should cook more. If you want to connect people, you should connect uh, people more by doing that. Uh, you get more uh, appreciation from your bosses and uh, clients and coworkers, and uh, people, you know, uh, really uh, will notice you. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get out of this low paying job. And after that, uh, next door will open up for you. So keep opening uh, new doors. And it's usually, it says, uh, the most exciting doors, usually scary, you know, but when you open the doors, uh, that is the right door for your new opportunities. Right. So I know from your story, you were exposed to some money wounds when you were younger. Mm -hmm. From your experience of having worked with literally tens of hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, mm -hmm. what do you find is the most common money blocks or money wounds people tend to have that makes them struggle financially? Tim, I, you're, you just keep asking great questions. Thank you. <laughs> So I think the most common one is uh, low self-esteem. That means that uh, since we had uh, experienced this um, uh, limitation, like I got denied uh, by my parents that, uh, that they, they're not going to buy a bike for me. 
because I was too small. So now you, now you feel like you, you, you don't have the worth to get the bike or get a summer camp or whatever that is. So even before trying, you feel like, oh, probably they're not going to give it to me. Th this kind of feeling and belief uh, limits you into a little box. And I guess uh, you're teaching to people to get out of the box that way, right? But the, the reason why we got into the box is what happened in our past. Right. So you find low self-esteem is one of the biggest money wound. Yes. And also, um, we were so afraid when our pa parents used to fight, you know, we just uh, hide under the, uh, the, uh, the sheet or the bed uh, until the storm goes away. So we somehow feel like money could be the source of all the trouble. So uh, you need to have money uh, for survival, but you don't want uh, too much extra because that could be the cause of uh, um, fights in your family members. So uh, we tend to think like uh, enough is okay, but like uh, too much is bad because um, um, one of my students' uh, parents used to say, you know, you don't want to be kidnapped, right? So if you, uh, if you, if your dad and mommy got money, you'll be kidnapped. You don't want that, right? So he was thinking like, oh, I wish I could, you know, I'd, I'd be rich enough to be kidnapped <laughs> is what he was say saying. So we feel like uh, more money equals trouble. That is also a deep subconscious uh, belief that we, uh, we tend to carry. Okay. Where can somebody start to reprogram their mind to really let go of these money wounds? Yeah, there are two things. You know, one, you can start healing your uh, past money wounds. Thinking back your, um, on like 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, when your mom and dad, were well, they were younger, you're probably like five or six. What happened? Like for me, I was denied of, uh, you know, uh, for a bike for my birthday present. And they, they, they had the money, but they, they were just uh, thinking that maybe too, uh, too much for a, a young boy because our uh, house stood on the uh, top of the hill. That could be a little dangerous, you know, for the bike ride. So now I understand. But uh, at the time, I thought I was just denied because I was not capable. I was not worth, I was not worth it. And when I go back to the picture, I just hold on to the little boy and say, no, you're worth something. But that, you know, uh, your parents are thinking, worrying that uh, you could you could get a cut uh, or this, you could uh, uh, hurt yourself. So it's nothing to do with your your worth. And uh, if you just uh, see the whole picture, your parents may be struggling with money. You know, they they, uh, they couldn't find the right job or just money was tight. So if you could understand them uh, as as they are, maybe. Uh, that will be the start of uh, your healing process. And the second one I would suggest is hang around with the people without money blocks. You know, there are people who have a very healthy attitude toward money. You know, they enjoy money, but they're not abusing money. So when you are hanging out with those people uh, without any money blocks, that, that's so liberating. You know, they buy what they want to buy and then not too abusive, you know. Um, so uh, if you hang around with those people, like my mentor, Wahe, uh, he used to carry gold coins uh, in his pocket. So whenever he, he sees a beautiful smile, he gives a gold, solid gold coin to a, a waiting person, you know, uh, to say, you have the best smile in the world, keep smiling. And he gives out like a thousand dollar gold coin. Wow. So if you're around those people, you know, like, oh, money, comes uh, and com comes and goes very easy and smooth. So uh, if you experience something like that, your um, belief about money shifts. Okay. So you mentioned uh, people who've got healthy belief with money, who aren't abusive with it. What do you mm -hmm. mean by abusive? Okay, so for example, uh, there are people who just cannot stop buying things, you know, they keep shopping. Uh, and they don't, they don't even open boxes after they, they buy expensive things like uh, all, all the uh, luxurious brands. So uh, they find so much joy in uh, buying something, so to feel control. Or they cannot stop making money. I, I just call it money addict. Uh, there are some money personality types. So if your money uh, personality type is a gambler or a money addict, 
you keep just making money. So I, I see them a lot among uh, entrepreneurs and uh, like hedge fund managers. You know, one million is not is not enough, and then they try to go for two millions, and then ten millions, and then hundred hundred millions. There is not enough for them. So uh, they're just uh, thinking that they're just playing the money game, but they're just in fact they're sucked into this uh, dark place. It's called money hell. Mm. Okay, so people who are chasing it, coming from scarcity, place from lack, sort of thing. Exactly. So no matter how much uh, they make, they 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 feel small. Uh, yeah. One of my clients uh, had a private jet, and uh, he said he always always feels so small when his car pulls over to this uh, special uh, you know gate for private jets because his private jets is the smallest. You know, uh, all the other jets are so big. You know, like some of them are jumbo, and he his uh, private jet seats only six people. So he feels like, uh, you know, I like am such a small guy <laughs> compared to these guys with uh, like, you know, uh, that they have beds and grand pianos in, the, you know, in the plane, like I, I, I have to squeeze myself into the plane. So uh, if you <laughs> and, and then he's making so much money uh, by anybody's standard. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling like you're small still in a big boat or, uh, you know, luxurious places, you cannot really enjoy. One time I heard about a man who just bought a boat, a, a very expensive boat, a yacht. And then on the boat, uh, you know what he was reading? He was reading a magazine for luxurious boats. And then he was, he's going to, he's looking for the next boat. <laughs> you know, you should enjoy while you're on the boat. But, you know, a money addict and abusers, uh, they tend to go act like, like that. Okay. So... With all that experience you've had now, what mm -hmm. would you say are some of the most healthy money beliefs one could carry? So I always in, uh, introduced this uh, idea of money container that I believe everybody is, was born with a certain container. You know, some people are destined to be very, very successful, like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and, uh, and, and th those entrepreneurs or uh, mega tycoon people they're born that way, you know, I'm sure they worked very hard, but not everybody can be like that. So, and, uh, you know, you have to know your right container size. If you um, try to um, grow your money container too fast, too quick, yeah, you're going to crack it. So you have to grow your money container uh, slowly. Otherwise, uh, I'm just advising to a lot of young entrepreneurs that they're going to crack their life. And uh, uh, because uh, uh, too much money is like flood, I always use analogy of money as, a, as water. You know, too much money causes flood, too little money causes drought. Uh, either way, not healthy. So you have to have the right amount. So to do that, you have to appreciate what you have. That is the first key. And then if your money uh, container grows bigger, you will probably make more money, spend more money. But if you're not destined to do that, don't try to be somebody who is not supposed to be you. You know, um, there are certain uh, like world that you need to live in. So, uh, so I think to be happy, you have to find who you are first. And so you don't have to be another billionaire to be happy. You know, to, uh, so uh, doing what you love and appreciating your uh, life at the moment is the key but just not pursuing uh, more money or bigger sales. Okay. Is there a way somebody can quickly know the size of their money container? Yes, that, that's also a, a very uh, common question. I mean, you keep asking great questions. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> you know, uh, for example, uh, just uh, uh, imagine your income right now, right? And make it five times or 10 times. Let's say if you're just making uh, 5,000 uh, euros a month, uh, just imagine that you're making uh, three times as much. So you feel, of course, great. But think about your expenses also three times more. That means you, ha you have uh, about 4,000 or 5,000 euros. Uh, instead, uh, you, you're going to have 15,000 uh, euros uh, a month for uh, like your rent or mortgage or something, right? And if you feel like, ooh, you know, <laughs> like a little tight, that's like the maximum of your money container. So 
uh, people cannot feel so comfortable when you're just uh, making uh, like four or five times more. So probably uh, uh, twice as much is a good amount. So you, you should grow your money container slowly. Okay. Yes. So with this money container, mm -hmm. is it fixed or can somebody upgrade their money container to make it bigger? Yes. Yes. Yeah. By the way, that's uh, often uh, how Europeans and American people ask me. Uh, in Japan, people ask me a different ang from a different angle. They say, how can I satisfy myself with the present container? <laughs> so it's like, a, you know, like going more and growing more is also an addiction, uh, addiction too. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, um, if you uh, in truly enjoy who you are at the moment, it's going to grow. So instead of saying like, I'm not enough, so I have to get more and then if you reach a bigger uh, money container, I have to get more. Instead, I'm so happy with where I am, but I'm sharing what I have, and then people start giving me back more. And so my container is naturally bigger. And with this uh, naturally bigger container, I can, uh, I, I can graciously give, up, give away more, and then I receive back. So if the process is organic, it's great. But think about it, if you just uh, uh, use, you know, uh, medicine, uh, like a, a steroid, uh, if you're an athlete, to just give you a boost to go bigger, 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 you're going to crack your money container. So as long as it's uh, organic growth, I think it's good. Okay, so if it's organic, it's going to feel more natural. And it's going to, is it going to expand the money container if it's organic? Or does it still remain fixed? Uh, it, it, for some people, and also something to do with your age, like uh, Tim, you're just go going to grow and grow and grow, right? For the next 20, 30 years. But uh, I'm, I'm 54 now. So like uh, I'm sort of um, over the top. I'm sort of like preparing for this uh, uh, senior age in a sense, right? So of course I can go uh, bigger, but my, uh, my energy and uh, my metabolism uh, is uh, a lot slower than I was uh, in my 30s, 40s, right? And so if you're hit in the 60s, some people grow, but uh, uh, physically, uh, you're just sort of like uh, going to, toward the end of your life. So uh, you don't have to expand so much and uh, you don't eat as much. And so uh, you could probably satisfy yourself with less and uh, less. So um, you have to know uh, when is your peak and uh, how much is enough and uh, how you want to end your life. Otherwise, you know, uh, a lot of younger entrepreneurs tend to think like, I grow this way, this way, this way, this way and then die at the top. You know, life doesn't go, uh, doesn't go that way. Usually you hit, the, uh, you hit the, uh, the high in your 40s or 50s, could be 60s, but then you gradually kind of slow down, right? Yeah, so cool. you have to know, uh, how you want to grow your business, how you, want to, how, you, how you want to manage your life. Otherwise, you are living in the illusion that I'll grow and grow and grow. So uh, it's more of a Zen attitude, but you have to find satisfaction in less. Okay, makes sense. So yourself, in terms of a belief, what, what do you have uh, as a belief in terms of money? What does money mean to you? To me, it's, uh, uh, it's almost like an angel, you know, angel friend. Uh, he or she can do wonders uh, because uh, the other day I just uh, offer a place online. I'm just making, uh, I'm, I'm writing a book or sometimes uh, two books a month. So I'm, uh, sometimes I, I, I use uh, writers, uh, the, uh, other writers to help me write uh, certain chapters. So I said, um, whoever wants to join me, uh, how I want to write my books and how I channel my books, I, because I speak nonstop for two hours and then he transcribes what, what, I, what I said, she is going to do that. And then the boom, the book comes out. So people are interested in the process, right? So whoever wants to see, donate a little money um, to be so a witness uh, in my online program. And about 200 people showed up and then uh, we just raised uh, 10,000 uh, US dollars for the Cambodian orphanage. 
And uh, so like money comes out, out of nowhere and it's not my money, but with my energy, with my support, uh, you know, that much money is uh, buying uh, all the uh, water system and all the, you know, uh, sani sanitary uh, things and also uh, fruits and food and all the supplies that they, they need. So uh, when I, I want money to be there, the money kind of uh, appears. So I don't really care if I'm getting paid or not. Like I'm not getting paid with this interview, but I enjoy as much as I do my online seminars. Uh, for me, it's the same thing because it's a, it's a joy of uh, sharing what I know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I share myself 100% all the time in, uh, in the form of writing. Now I'm talking and uh, I'm just, this is a fun way of meeting new people, right? So I enjoy every second of it. So by doing that, uh, um, sometimes I get money from that uh, companies or a publisher directly. Sometimes I don't. But uh, with other investments and other things, I, uh, I, I earned uh, much, much more than uh, I, I spend. So I have an ex excess of um, money, right? I, I think three of us can live in a uh, small um, amount of money. So I can feed hundreds of family with my income. So I'm so happy to share what I have and what I know with other people. So the more I do, somehow more money I I, um, I receive. So this is almost like a uh, almost like a fun uh, snowball battle. Like I give up, you know, my, my money and then I, I get more. So like I'm just playing with money by helping. So by helping more. Somehow the more comes back uh, in terms of a book sales or online seminars. I attract thousands of people and they pay a lot of money for that. So I, I receive it well and appreciate the money coming in because people trust me enough that I'll just use the money wisely for other people. So for me, money is uh, energy of love. And so I receive love, I share love, and then loves come back. So it's uh, so much fun to deal with money in my life. Right. So you said it's like an energy of love. So do you ever think about money when you're working or is it more you're radiating love? So I, I used to think like uh, writing is a, a tough work, but now I'm, it's almost like a taking a walk or like brushing my teeth. So it's a part of my uh, routine uh, in everyday life. Uh, I have a computer in my car, in my like, uh, in my in houses. So wherever I go, I can uh, type in two seconds. You know, all, all the computers are synced to my crowd. So uh, you know, whatever I write will be stored right away. So I, I keep writing all the time. I keep speaking all the time, and this is my passion. This is my love. So um, uh, it's 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 a little bit hard to explain. Because for, for some people, work is from nine to like a certain time. Yeah. But you know, Tim, uh, what I'm talking about, you know, uh, if you're just passionately teaching uh, classes for five days, you wish there will be like two more days, right? Mm, for sure. That makes yeah. sense. So you are doing what you love. So mm -hmm. it just naturally, you just radiate love, basically. Uh, yeah, that's it's so much fun. So I'm so curious mm -hmm. how my students are, are going to grow. You know, yeah. I, I have impacted uh, millions of people for the past two decades. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, you know, I often eat out at the restaurant and then people approach me saying, you, you must be Ken Honda, right? You know, I read your book 15 years ago. And uh, unless somebody stop, stops him or her, they, they keep talking for five minutes and uh, how I changed uh, their life. So uh, I, uh, you know, uh, not all the time, but I just enjoy uh, their sharing because I know I impacted them in a deep way. So their life is uh, transformed now into a peaceful one. So they're having a better relationship in the family and uh, uh, with friends, and especially they have a better relationship with themselves, which is uh, very important. So the more we can do it, the more peace we find in our community and so hopefully globally, that's why I'm just doing this interview and uh, doing activities in English. So it's my hope 
that more happy money will, will spread out and then uh, people don't have to pay anything, right? Just appreciate your money, appreciate your life. By doing that, I think we can be more generous with each other. Okay. What advice would you give to somebody who's hearing you right now thinking, you know, it's good for Ken because he has mm -hmm. got abundance of money. Yes. I've got, I've got nothing right now. Mm -hmm. How can I feel like Ken when I've got nothing and I feel like I'm broke? What advice would you give to this? Yes. Person? So I think you're just focusing on too much visible assets. I often talk about invisible assets. Okay. That's that could be your youth, your energy, and also your friends and your ideas and uh, your heart. You know, um, we just um, um, unfortunately we value how much money you have in your bank account or how many, how, 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 how you own things. But in life, there are so many invisible assets that you can count on. So instead of having so much money in your bank account, if you have uh, 10 good friends who, who just let you stay for a week or so, you can keep on living. You know, I, I, the other day I, I, I wrote down how many friends I have, and then I realized I have more than 50 friends who can just, you know, feed me for a week. So you just uh, keep visiting your friend uh, every week until the next year comes. So, you know, you can live off of your friendship for a year. That's financial independence. So you may think you're broke uh, financially, but you may have other different assets. So start counting what you have. If you have a roof over your head, that's, you know, that's a great luxury, uh, um, like top, uh, top 30 or 40 percent or uh, that people have a hot running water and you know, electricity. Uh, not uh, all of all of us have the luxury on this planet right now. So if you start counting that you have probably more than enough for survival, then uh, this appreciation kicks in. So the uh, more uh, you appreciate about life, uh, the more it grows. So what you whatever you appreciate appreciates. So um, even though you start out from nothing, you, you must have heard a story that uh, self-made millionaires. They started from a far worse situation than you are. So anybody can do it. And, and the, the first step is the curiosity. Hmm, somebody like me, do you think I'll be an abundant person in the future? If that is the case, what is my next step? And then start asking many good questions like, uh, Tim, you've been asking great questions. So you should ask your right questions. How can I start uh, my new life today? What are the steps? What can I do to change my life or turn my life around? And if you keep asking those questions, uh, new answers will start popping in. And then your life will be transformed in a couple of years. And after that, um, it's uh, relatively easy. Once you get out of this dark place, you will probably start believing yourself more and uh, you have uh, more support from other people. By receiving more support, you'll be more confident, you'll be happier, and then you, you can see a brighter future. So maybe you're at the bottom of your life, but that doesn't mean you stay at the bottom for the rest of your life. So trust me and just Google uh, somebody's life. You know, uh, There are so many people who start from zero or minus uh, and that they end up being very happy and abundant. And I hope you'll be the next one. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense. Find that spark of inspiration as well as that source of abundance in a way. Yes. So just please find the right um, uh, one for you uh, mm. because they're exactly uh, somebody who, who sort of like uh, started out from your place. And then uh, uh, slowly find uh, found her or uh, his way from there to just um, uh, where they are now. So um, I'm sure uh, you may be having a hard, hard time, but it's a temporary thing. It's not going to last forever. So just trust that something is going to shift. And I have the I have seen it so many times. So just I have great hopes for you. Okay. Why do you believe? some people are able to experience faster financial abundance flowing their way compared to some who maybe might not experience it. 
Why do some people experience that? That's a, also another great question, Tim, because, you know, uh, we are driven by how we think and how we feel and how we how we act. And uh, some people are just uh, these three of them are just uh, t can go together. Like when they think uh, uh, smoking is bad up here and here and also, OK, I'll quit today. Some people can do that as fast as in, in two seconds. But other people think. Uh, I know I should go on a diet, you know, I think I should get up early, I should be on the right diet. And you feel like, hmm, but I love potato chips, I love fish and chips, or whatever that is, right? And then you don't act at all. So uh, if the combination of how you think and how you feel and how you act are just like on, you know, on the right uh, combination, you keep going. But if uh, one is go, go, the other is break, you know, it's kind of like go and, and stop. So I think you have to sort out uh, these three, how you think, how you feel, and how you act has to be the same. Mm. So they need to check in and check to see, am I thinking right? Am I acting right? Am I feeling right? And it's got to be aligned. Yes, exactly. So most of us feel like even though we know we have to do this, but you know, I'm sure all of us, I, I, I have experienced the same thing. You know you know you have to break up with her or break up with him or I have to leave the job but you can't because you're too afraid you know so it, it may take a little while uh, for the fear to go away or well, you jump uh, over anyway you know so uh, it takes some time and courage and so I, I'm not blaming you to do it right away and uh, uh, it's natural for us to stop so just uh, I hope you forgive yourself for for not being able to just act in two seconds. Okay. So our listeners are big fan of like habits, like morning habits and evening habits. Do you have any good recommendation for any good habits that they can do to strengthen their money mindset? Mm -hmm. So in the morning, I always imagine what kinds of fun things are on their way. So I, I always think uh, it's almost like a, this FedEx person, you know, the delivery man is delivering happiness and fun things. And he's driving to my place, you know. So I always envision a happy Christmas gifts on me, and, you know. So, uh, so oh, I don't know what kind of gift I'm gonna get. So I, I get excited. So mm -hmm. that's how I start my day. And during the day, I try to enjoy every second of it. I enjoy writing today. Um, I, uh, I had a fun interview. Uh, I had so much fun at the clubhouse. I'm going to be interviewed by somebody uh, in, on Iceland in Europe. So today is a Europe day somehow. So I, I can't wait to see her or him. And so uh, during the day, I'm excited. And then at the end of the day, I count all the fun uh, things that happened on that day. Like, uh, like Tim Han, what a great man. You know, I can't believe he's so young and he's so accomplished right now. You know, 10 years, wow, how high he's going to uh, uh, fly. So I just uh, bless him and uh, all the fun questions you ask. And then, you know, one by one, and I, I cannot usually make it to the end because I, I, I go to, I just fall asleep in the middle of the uh, day, you know, by just counting how much fun and I just uh, uh, keep sending them blessings. So if you make it a habit, you uh, feel much, much happier because your attitude is uh, more toward uh, counting your blessings than counting uh, shortcomings. Because you know life is half and half. If you just start counting all the shortcomings, there are a lot. And if you just find uh, happy uh, memories, you can count a lot too. Yeah, makes sense. You mentioned earlier, when we were talking about the money container, that mm -hmm. Americans and English people ask you different questions compared to yes. Japanese. So I was wondering, since you have reached out to millions of people, have you seen that, that there are common culture money wounds uh, in different countries, or is it more mm -hmm. their upbringing that impacts money wounds? Yes, yes. So I don't want to go too much into politics, but for example, Japan has a pretty good safety net. You know, even if you lose uh, your job, uh, medical bills are free, and then you get uh, enough money, uh, monthly payment, you know, you get like a, a, a 1400 euros. So, you know, enough to live by. 
So you can sort of like fall back on, you know, you, you can go to a dentist or a doctor for free uh, if you just, um, you know, lose everything. But somewhere like in North America, uh, like United States, uh, you know, the socially, you don't have the right uh, safety net. And also uh, family wise, like a uh, country like Mexico, they, or Korea, they have a very strong family. By the way, that's why I love uh, Korea and Mexico about that family first. So even though the government uh, is not helping you as much, you know you're safe because somebody will help you. That's a good feeling. So that's something you, uh, it's harder to find in the Western world because uh, more individualistic. And some governments are not interested in supporting uh, people as much. So uh, it's a political system and also the feeling in a society that, uh, you know, a certain crime rate, uh, when it's higher, you have a hard time trusting people. So that's also uh, eating up, you know, your um, your happiness. It's almost like, you know, uh, it's, it, the wave is uh, eating up uh, a fun sand uh, castle that you built. So uh, anthropologically and also politically, it's so interesting to see how people react to money. But uh, overall, we live in a, a place of scarcity. So I hope. Uh, in like 30 years, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be out of the scarcity mentality. Yeah, for sure. So in the Western world, is there like a money block that you see the most common in Western countries? Yes, uh, I think more is such a, a great religion. More, bigger, oh. better. So like the more is better, so the growth is good. So, uh, you know, if you're addicted to growing more, uh, faster, uh, uh, you know, I think this capitalism is a sort of like a symbol. I'm not a socialist, but if you just try to grow, 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 we're going to eat up all the resources. Mm -hmm. For example, if India and China are, are growing uh, to the level of in America, you know, uh, we're going to need five more planets like us, ours. Mm -hmm. So we have to start learning how to satisfy ourselves with less. But uh, at this point, we cannot do that. We, we keep building more buildings. We keep, uh, you know, just creating more things. And uh, a lot of uh, boats are going back and forth. You know, I, I was a little confused because uh, a, a few days ago, I had a dinner, you know, uh, like a salmon comes from Norway and there's uh, certain vegetables from China. You know, uh, we can grow our veggie over there. Maybe we, we should fish in the river nearby. Right, so uh, there is so much waste, but uh, I because of economics and and uh, cu uh, cutting costs and all that, uh, we are contaminating the world, and we have to wake up to a new level of way of living, and I think it's happening uh, right now uh, as uh, this capitalism is collapsing. Uh, it's so interesting. I think a new world is uh, uh, on its way that people will treat each other with respect and uh, and and fairness. And I hope it's going to come soon, you know, uh, because what's going on between the industrialized country and the third world the developing countries are uh, uh, very sad for me. Yeah. So addicted to more. Mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely can see that out here. I was culturally conditioned in Western world. So are you suggesting we begin to settle? in a way with less or are you suggesting something else i'm not suggesting uh not much uh more of a um i think if we could satisfy uh, ourselves with what we are mm. and we might grow or we might downsize it's up to you but not everybody has to grow 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 you know so grow your income like triple your income or you can uh, downgrade uh, your lifestyle. You know that's why I was saying, like I haven't met many people who'd say uh, next year I will uh, I'll make sure that I make less money, so I have more time. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, a lot of people say uh, next year I'm going to grow my business to like two hundred percent, and then wow, right? So uh, uh, just imagine for just f fun of it, I make half the money next year and see if I can stay happy. So if you can just shift your mental attitude, it could be fun. And then you realize that you may not need so much money after all. And in fact, 
people are doing uh, more work and more uh, more um, time consumed by work related activities. Uh, Europe is not as bad as America, but after just spending four years for my family, I realized that we are addicted to work uh, and mostly it's a financial needs, but also socially we are addicted to working so hard. So uh, hopefully in the next 20, 30 years, we'll be fra uh, free from work and to spend more time in more creative activities like art and the music and uh, all the other things. You know, I think we're too focused on business. Is there like a, a tip you could give us uh, that would help us to be more happy with less? I think uh, find a joy in, um, uh, how, how should I say, um, if you can just find, waste your time, waste your money in the little things that doesn't uh, uh, work financially, uh, that's fun. Like a friend of mine is collecting uh, soda cans, you know, uh, the, the soda cans that people just uh, drink it and then li lift over. He loves collecting those. And it's not producing any money, right? Yeah. To me personally, it's a piece of garbage, but he collects all the can cans from uh, Europe, like uh, Africa and China. And he has, he, he, he built a museum actually out of that. Wow. See, yeah. So like uh, hobbies, you don't uh, think about the cost effectiveness, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, all the fun things are actually co not cost effective, but uh, in the business world, we are just focusing on cost cutting and productivity, efficiency. But when you come to think of your personal life, uh, say if you're cooking with your family, with your kids, uh, it may take three hours for the, for the pasta and it doesn't look good and it doesn't taste good, right? You should hire a chef for the better food, right? If you have money. But do you want to do that? Or do you want to cook, uh, you know, terrible, uh, you know, very bad shaped pasta and then ravioli, right? And then eat together and laugh. Oh, this doesn't stay so good. The sauce is too salty or the shape isn't right. But it's so much fun. So uh, if you can forget about the productivity, uh, efficiency, uh, certain time of the day, you can find more happiness. So. Uh, don't uh, focus on uh, business and life uh, out of um, proficiency or efficiency uh, because you're going to lose what's so much fun. A lot of people try to save money for investing more, but for what? You know, uh, saving the future for the future is good, but if you do it too much, you're going to lose the joy that you could potentially have because money is there for your enjoyment. So please don't get it wrong. You know, if you just think of it as too much security, you're going to lose all the fun right now. And uh, don't save it uh, till you retire. So yeah, have fun yeah. now. I, I can relate to what you're saying. I mean, I've been brought up with saving, saving, saving uh, mm -hmm. all my life. <laughs> so is there like a percentage amount you recommend for us to spend? Or is it more, <laughs> is it more just let go? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, some people uh, love numbers, so you should come up with the numbers. But the funny thing is the more uh, I income, you know, the higher income you have, you don't have to have the numbers, you know. So like, uh, uh, don't corner yourself into productivity and also numbers uh, because life can be so much fun. So if you forget about the numbers and if you feel the call, I want to buy this buy it and then you just figure out later and sometimes you have to be outrageous because all the outrageous things could be a fun memory when you go you know uh, grow old when you hit your 70s all the fun memories you had is like uh, the stupid mistakes why did i buy that you know why did i marry her <laughs> and those <laughs> like stupid things that wasn't logical at the time uh became such a fun memory so don't try to do it right do it smart because all the uh, smart decisions add up to a boring life. Maybe you have enough financial secur security, but so what? You know, uh, if you have, if you're enjoying your life and if you have a bunch of friends, uh, like, like say, I have no financial worries because 
uh, you know, I don't have any debt, but if I lose everything, still, I'm okay because I have so many happy friends who are going to make sure I'm not going to fall uh, if I lose everything. So I trust my friends uh, more than anything so I can keep on focusing on, on giving. So if you can just focus on what you want to do instead of security, your life will be 100 times uh, more fulfilling. So don't try to save money out of security or just out of fear. Um, uh, as long as you enjoy and just uh, keep sharing and giving, uh, people will help you when you're in need. So uh, and I hope you ha have more trust in your life so uh, you don't have to worry about anything in your life. Yeah, love it. This is very powerful. Ken, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us your, your wisdom for our audience. Thank you. If you were to just uh, leave us with like one final message you want all of us to remember from the last 60 minutes, what uh -huh. would that final message be? Don't worry, there will be always a door for you. So if you try to open the door, wrong doors, it won't open. But you know, uh, if you find the right door, it'll open, it's, it's open for you. So don't worry, be happy and just follow your heart and people will help you. And so trust life.